Hello folks, welcome to my channel. Uh, today's video is uh, called Pitch by Pitch Baseball Sims. And it's something I've been working on uh, for quite a while, but this particular video I've been working on for a couple of days off and on, kind of uh, to the point of making my my head hurt, to be, to be honest. This is a bit of a risk here because uh, this, this video is gonna get down into the weeds may not be for everybody, but, uh, you know, for, for the rest of you, uh, thanks for listening. And, uh, I'd be interested in your, in your comments, uh, as to what you think about this, uh, concept and idea. So, uh, most of the video today is going to fo focus on Tony Gwynn's stats. Uh, I like to look at people that I think I, I would call outliers, uh, in order to highlight various aspects of, of Sims. And so I, I picked Tony Gwynn for this exercise. So, um, quick intro here. So these are some of my thoughts uh, as I've worked on this. Now, there are some pitch by pitch baseball Sims that do exist uh, out there. Uh, I think they're relatively rare, at least for the card and dice realm. Uh, there was a recent Facebook post about this uh, concept and a few names came up. Uh, I'll talk about one uh, at the end um, of this video. Um, my thoughts are that most gamers probably avoid pitch-by-pitch -pitch games because they, they might take longer to play or just the pitch-by-pitch -pitch aspect isn't, isn't uh, sufficiently represented in, in, in the game format. Um, I mean, I think the question is, does, does the pitch-by-pitch -pitch approach add to the gameplay experience or does it detract um, interestingly, pitch by pitch data for Major League Baseball players uh, is available, as best I can tell, from about 1981 onward. At least that was the case for, for Tony Gwynn. Um, so, the natural question I have is can this data be used to build a pitch by pitch baseball simulation? So, um, if you have a player's pitch by pitch data, then you know, arguably you could create some kind of a card, which we'll see. Uh, to, in order to replicate, uh, you know, his performance on a pitch-by-pitch -pitch basis. But as with most baseball sims, um, there's another layer of complexity that, that comes with then how do you interact the pitcher and the batter. Um, you know, as I, as I kind of alluded already, um, you could do pitch-by-pitch -pitch in a computer-based um, context, and I think some games do that. Uh, I have to believe that some of these complexities that I'm going to talk about today uh, remain in that in that uh, digital world. So enough background. So on my channel, I have a couple of other videos. Uh, one of my early ones was about a game that I came up actually when I was a teenager, which unfortunately was like 50 years ago. Um, and I wrote down some simple rules on a piece of tablet paper and it was a balls and strikes game, uh, lots of dice rolling, which, which uh, you know, satisfied my 13 to 15 year old uh, self. And uh, you know, there, everybody was generic, uh, but we made up all these fictional teams and fictional leagues. And I and my neighbor um, played it extensively. I think a couple other of my friends as well. You know, we made up, you know just all kinds of strange names and, and, and team themes. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of one that's repeatable right now, but sometimes we made up names just by taking common words and, and um, uh, switching the order of the letters. So instead of Steve, it would be Yvette's, and that would be the guy's name. So anyway, um, when I first, a couple years ago, first got back into tabletop games, one of the first things I did is modernize uh, the rule set for for that game, and there's a video uh, where I where I talk about that. That game's available if if anybody wants it. I'll I'll provide the link here in a minute. And then about a year and a half ago, um, after I recorded that video, uh, I made contact with another game designer, uh, Brian Hafferkamp. Um, he has a company called Clark and Addison uh, Game Company. And I'll give you a link to that as well. But anyways, Brian and I started corresponding and um, 
this particular uh, format uh, and color coordination here is, is actually Brian's um, design. But what Brian did is he kind of built on my idea and he actually created a couple of teams worth of, of player cards. And, and I believe initially they were just batter cards. And the way this game works, it uses two D6 dice, one, one darker one and one lighter one. And uh, you roll the dice on each pitch and it may be a ball, it may be a swinging strike, it may be um, uh, you know, called strike, um, it may be a foul ball or the ball may be put in play. And then if it's in play, you roll one more time and you determine whether it's a hit or an out and then um, from that, uh, not only do you know if it's a hit or an out, but you know if it's a, um, what type of hit or what type of out it is. So um, it can be fun to play. You, you can actually go pretty fast if you understand that there's some, some consistency in how these charts are designed. So for example, almost every time a one comes up on the dice, you know it's a ball. Whereas if it's uh, very high numbers, it's most likely the ball's going to be in play. Um, and so, you know, here we have we're here we have Aaron Judge. You know, um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to if I'll be able to do this, but if we rolled one quick at bat, we would we would roll these dice. There's a three three. Doesn't matter how you read it because a lot of these charts are symmetrical. So that's ball one. Um, we'll roll again. Five, four, so five on top, four on the bottom, that's a foul ball. That's a one, one. Uh, one, five, well, if there's a one, you already know it's a ball, two and one. And there's a six, two. So six, two is a strike. So uh, <clears throat> remember, right, it's two and two. There's a two, five. And... Uh, you struck out. So there you have it. Um, you might wonder, and this is just an example, but you might wonder why there are so many hits on the right side of the chart here. And don't forget that, you know, uh, the first set of rolls here, as we just saw, can result in a strikeout. So what you're looking at over here really is the batting average, excluding strikeouts, um, with, with one minor exception. And, um, you know, a couple other things down here. Um, Aaron Judge in 2022 struck out 25% of the time, which is relatively high, uh, although these days it's, it's not completely uncommon. In the old days, I think 15% uh, strikeout rate was probably the average. And then he walks at a fairly high rate as well, 16%. And I think something in the neighborhood of 10% might be considered more normal. And then of course, this was his 62 home run year. So um, there's lots of home runs in the lower right hand corner of this, uh, this second chart. So yeah, that's how the game works. And we're going to use this framework uh, to talk about Tony Gwynn. So before I do that, uh, I mentioned Brian Hafferkamp and his um, his channel, and he has actually recorded a game using these cards that I mentioned, including the 20, 2022 Yankees. He records two different games, and he shows how it works and how it flows. He actually uses a, a, a dice roller on his, on his phone, and, and the game goes pretty fast. But you can uh, check that out. Uh, these links will be in the, in the description. Um, the videos that I did, uh, the, the first one, is listed there with its name and link. And then the second one where I start talking about some of the math that we're gonna talk about today, uh, those are worth watching either before or after this video. Uh, my channel's at the bottom. Um, just recently I uploaded all these PowerPoints to Google Drive, so email me if you want those. Um, in particular, maybe more than most of my videos, comments uh, with any insights uh, about some of the things that I'm going to talk about today are, are quite welcome. Um, and feel free to like and subscribe, but um, the comments are what we're, we're really here for. Okay, so I 
I think it was Brian actually that turned me on to this, but on Baseball Reference, you can get a player's um, a player's data for um, how how many pitches he has seen and what happened on those pitches. And if I if I said earlier 1981, I meant uh, 1988. As you can see here, there's always one mistake uh, in my uh, PowerPoints. So um, just a matter of where's Waldo and finding it. Anyway, 1988 to 2001, Tony Gwynn played 14 years. He saw 22,680 pitches in 6,700 plus at bats or plate appearances. So his average pitches per plate appearance was 3.35. Apparently during that time, the major league average was 3.68. I'm used to seeing an average more of like 3.8, 3.9 um, pitches per, per plate appearance, but um, that, that's just for future reference when we talk here. And then you can see that 62.6% uh, .6 of Tony's uh, pitches he saw were strikes, and this is strikes in the context of basically anything that wasn't a ball. Uh, so we're going to anal analyze this data a little bit more on the next slide. So uh, I've excluded intentional balls and then uh, broke down Tony's pitches. And so in the top right, the red here, 18% uh, of pitches uh, were uh, strikes looking. Uh, a very small 3% of strikes of, of I'm sorry, of pitches were swinging strikes. 14% uh, of pitches were fouls. And then 27% um, were put in play and 37% were, were balls. And uh, let's just go ahead and compare him against the major league averages, which we saw a couple pages ago. And so I've circled a couple of them that really distinguished Tony here, which is you know, if he was swinging the bat, he was going to make contact. So he had a very small percentage of his uh, pitches that he saw that were swinging strikes. And conversely, uh, a pretty high uh, in-play percentage. Uh, the rest is kind of uh, somewhat normal, actually. Um, so hey, what do you do with this data? Well, what you can do is, is build this um, player dynamic, this player card, if you will, um, in this format and roll the dice and presumably he's going to perform uh, as he did in real life. And the way I measure that performance is ultimately by the result. Was it a, was it a walk, a strikeout, or did the, did the ball go and play? Now this is a screenshot from a spreadsheet I built and I mentioned it in the prior videos. And there's a lot of numbers here, but basically what this spreadsheet does is it runs uh, more than 6,000 pitch simulations or plate appearance. I say plate appearance simulation, I mean, I mean 6,000 pitch simulations. So, okay, there's a second, a second error. Um, using the breakdown of balls and strikes and foul balls and in play. And for this simulation, I didn't distinguish between swinging strikes and uh, looking strikes. And since it's 2d6, you have to break these down as best you can into 36 chances. So these percentage breakdowns aren't going to be exactly what you saw on the prior page, but they're pretty close. And so you type this data in. It adds up to 36 and you push the button and it runs 6,000 plus simulations. And when it's done, it tells you how many of the plate appearances uh, put the ball in play, how many were walks, and how many were strikeouts. And again, this is straight off of uh, the Gwyn data that we looked at earlier. And what I found out is if I look at um, Gwyn's uh, statistics here in real life, 88% of his plate appearances, the ball was put in play. 7.6% were walks. So slightly, actually slightly below average, I would say, maybe around average. 
and then uh, only 4% strikeouts, very low. I mean, we compared to Aaron Judge, we saw, what was it, 25% strikeout rate. Uh, Gwynn only had a 4% strike, strikeout rate. But what you see here is just based on this data and the simulations that the balls put in play were lower than normal, walks were close enough, and strikeouts were way, way higher. And um, that worked out to 2,100 plate appearances. So I calculated the pitches per plate appearance. And so I now have two questions. One is why didn't these results work out the way uh, I expected? And then why is this pitches per plate appearance low? I'll speculate here in, in a bit. So then what I did is I found a third error on the slide here, so I'll fix that before I post it. But then what I did is I said, well, if I just play around with with these numbers and you know give them 15 ball 15 ball chances out of 36 instead of 13, and I increase the in play and I reduce the strikes significantly, then uh, I can run a simulation. And I can get something that's about as close as possible. I mean, here the strikeout rate was a little lower than it should have been. Um, the walk rate was a little higher. And the in-play happened to work out exactly. And, and again, it's a still, um, still a low pitches per plate appearance. You know, so what causes that? And the only theory, my leading theory that I have right now is that even though uh, this is the breakdown of the pitch types, uh, this simulation does not take into account any um, count-specific context. So it's very possible that, that Tony Gwynn was, was patient, and it's possible that he, um, in a given plate appearance, his behavior might, might change uh, depending depending on the count. And, um, you know, I, I, I really can't, can't explain it. I mean, um, when I look over, over here, uh, it's not an issue with the simulation in the sense of, you know, how the pitches uh, turned out by type, because this column over here is an indication of the percentage breakdown by type compared to what we were trying to get. And so the simulation only had a mild amount of uh, variability, statistical variability, uh, which is one of the reasons why I did 6,000 uh, pitch uh, simulation. Uh, but anyways, um, you know, there's problematic. And so one of the things this would say, at least in creating a game, you ca is that you can't take the uh, actual data and use that to simulate Tony Quinn. You, you actually have to use this spreadsheet and trial and error until you get something that works. Um, so if you do that, uh, taking the second, second example, I created a, a, a make, well, not a make believe, but a, a sample of Tony Gwynn's chart, and you can see it looks a lot different than, than Aaron Judge's chart. There's even more walks on it, or balls on it, I mean. Very few foul balls, very few strikes of any kind, and that means he put the ball in play a lot. And then when you come over here uh, to the balls in play chart, um, you know, because he didn't strike out a lot, this, this hit versus out mix is gonna more closely re uh, resemble his batting average. And then you can see in the lower right, most of his hits were singles, and he had so few home runs and triples that you have to find some way to kind of split that, that, that box up maybe with a supplemental dice roll. So, um, so there you have Tony Gwynn. Um, so that's really all I wanted to say about this. It really, I'm just left with a lot of questions and and how, how would be the best way, if you were going to build a game like this, how would be the best way to deal with um, 
some of these anomalies that I've that I've highlighted. I think the the one thing I learned uh, based on a, a recent conversation with Brian is that there's actual pitch by pitch data uh, that you could uh, come up with some kind of context or count specific uh, uh, engine, if you will, and then build your, your simulation off of that. I'm guessing that that would produce results that, that would be pretty close to real life. Um, but uh, that's kind of way beyond the scope of what I would ever do if I were to continue to work, work on this game. I mentioned at the beginning there are some other um, games that use pitch by pitch. The one I have a general familiarity with is Baseball Classics. And I superimposed an arrow over here. And um, they have an, what they call an RTP column where you can choose instead of... Um, instead of just rolling uh, the four dice and getting the result, you can roll the four dice and interpret it as, as a pitch result. And uh, just like I had before on the, the previous chart, it could be a ball in play, it could be a swinging strike, it could be a looking strike, it could be a foul ball, or it could be a ball. So um, again, um, I mentioned there's four dice that are used in this game. You add them up. Uh, the distribution here is, is in the upper right-hand corner. So uh, I put a red box around the kind of the results in the middle. 14 is the most common. But the reason why I put a box around this is uh, from a statistical standpoint, there are a lot of balls in play on Altuve's chart. Now, I may not understand how this RTP uh, situation works on, uh, on baseball classics. Um, so I'm not really making a value judgment here. I'm just, uh, again, adding, adding to my confusion about, you know, what, what you should do in a game like this. I did summarize um, Altuve's uh, pitch distribution. Uh, the blue bar is uh, in real life, and the orange is in baseball classics. And, you know, there's some, some major inconsistency, which, you know, I... I just saying I don't understand. Maybe right, maybe wrong, maybe I don't understand the game. Um, if you did use the orange breakdown, I put it into the simulation, and 98% of the plate appearances, uh, off, at least on dice rolls, uh, directly off of Altuve's chart, um, would be putting the ball in play, 98%. Uh, and I rolled a few dice just to see, and, and uh, that's more or less uh, obvious what, what happened. So I, I really don't understand how that works. If anybody plays baseball classics and uses that feature, please please weigh in. Uh, I'd be curious to understand. The other important thing I might, I might have alluded to already is this is only looking at Altuve's chart, and baseball classics is a 50-50 engine. So half the rolls will be against the pitcher card and half will be against the batter card. And that interaction may, may change uh, the ultimate results. Again, not a value judgment. Um, that's all I really wanted to say, but if anybody has any insights, uh, I would appreciate it. Again, this is more of a science project for me. I really doubt I'm gonna do much more work with it, uh, partially because of the, um, of the issues that, that I identified in this latest analysis, but um, thanks for listening and uh, have a good day.